Hello guys, welcome to Potans 4 on the first video in my History for Wargamers series where we will explore military history from Wargamers perspective. In this video, we will take a look at Scottish mercenaries in Gustavus Adolfus' army during the Thirty Years' War. Sweden was scarcely populated at the time and the king needed to hire mercenaries in significant numbers if he wanted to fill large armies and avoid popular riots at home. The system was entirely based on a few enterprising officers who were given personal patent to raise a regiment by King Gustavus. However, for the colonel in charge of raising the regiment, those soldiers were mostly means to earn money from the state and some treated their soldiers as such. There is even one quote from a contemporary Scottish officer. They, the regimental owners, paid only when they exhausted every means of paying evasion. But of course, the promise of quick money drove the foreigners into the ranks of Gustavus's armies anyway. And to be honest, Scotland at the time was overcrowded and poor, and the Scots already had a long history of providing mercenaries. The Swedish army had four old colored regiments. Blue, yellow, red and green. The colors refers to the regimental flags colors, not the uniform as is usually misinterpreted. And why I'm talking about them here? The colonel of the Brun Regiment was a Scottish officer, Sir John Hepburn, and had a handful of Scottish officers, but the rank and file troops were generic mercenaries. And the regiment was not compromised by Scots, as it sometimes wrongly assumes and even scouted the Scottish regiment. The surviving master roles in the Stockholm military archives clearly show that the majority of the soldiers were Germans from the Duchy of Brandenburg, and the regiment has no Scots except for a handful of officers. But anyway, the British soldiers were second in number right behind the Germans. The Scots were favored by Gustavus because they were, they were from similar harsh climate and had basically no political interest in the continent, which was the case with the Germans who wanted to fight close to home and were not really happy about being stationed in Poland or in Baltics. This even led to some Scotsmen climbing the ranks of the Swedish army with attaining the ranks of generals the most notable by being Alexander Leslie, the first Earl of Loven, a Scottish nobleman who attained the rank of Field Marshal in the Swedish Army. The extraordinary trust in the Scots can be seen in the fact that the Scottish nobleman, Donald Mackay, was entrusted with raising cavalry units from the Scots to serve as lifeguard for the King Gustavus in 1631. From 1624 to 1632, total of 16 Scottish regiments were raised, with, along with additional two mixed Scottish-Irish and one Scottish-German regiment. Just to make a li the list of the British mercenaries complete, there were also seven English regiments. Scottish veterans also left some of the most detailed, detailed accounts of Gustavus Adolphus' war and Robert's Monroe memoirs. Monroe, his expedition with the Worthy Scots regiments called MacCase, is probably even the first regimental history book ever written. The Scots were known for their distinctive uniforms and equipment. The typical uniform of a Scottish mercenary in this period was the blue-grey coat, bonnet, and sometimes a plaid or kilt. They are, but there are two myths about the Swedish army during the Forty Years' War, which are both false and even contradictory. The first myth suggests that Gustavus Adolphus was the first to raise an army in uniforms, and the second claimed that his army was ragtag force in civilian clothes. However, there is partial truth in both myths. When the Swedes arrived in Germany, they were wearing Greek clothes associated with the peasant class at the time. They were mocked by continental Europeans who took their look more like peasants than their regular army. However, the mockery wasn't because they were wearing civilian peasant clothing, but rather based just on the grey colour itself. The cloth was seen as basic necessity, and the jackets and breeches were bought on the regimental expenses. There is one important bit for us war gamers. The breeches and the jackets were bought and issued together as a set. So when you are fighting your troops, they should have the same colour of jackets and pants. Of course, campaign wears down the clothes, but the replacements were also issued in pairs of jacket and breeches, so basically your soldiers should be clad in a single color. As early as 1622, 
King Gustavus issued an order that each company within a regiment should be caught in the same force. Of course, orders are one thing, and the harsh reality of campaign is another, but there were clearly measurements to have uniformly clad soldiers, which is no surprise since in Germany and all, single corps regiments, mostly in red or yellow, were common from the start of the century. So Gustavus Adolphus didn't invent anything, he was just taking to be at the same level as was common at the time in the continental Europe. We have some surviving echoes of Purchase list for clothing for regiments, but they are mostly just described as 150 colored reg- jackets with no emphasis on the color itself. We have one account from James Ramsey's Scottish company, we, where we know that from the purchase list for the clothes, there were clothes for something like 40 soldiers to wear Scots blue, but there were it's the real blue or the greyish blue color we know for the Scottish. Around 8 soldiers would wear yellow and red, respectively. And about 20 had one single unspecified color. And there is, for the rest, about 30 soldiers. They would have some random assortment of colored jackets. There were also some instances of Scots retaining their tartan plates. But that was a rare occurrence where individual soldiers kept them as extra clothing. And that's only pertaining to extra clothing, not some mythical Scottish pride or clan pride or stuff like that. It's just something that is interpreted in the modern era by modern nationalistic lenses and is a relic of romantic tales from 19th century. Soldiers were mostly uniform upon their arrival, so they would basically look like any regular Swedish soldier. With one exception, the headgear. Scots in Swedish service still retain their distinctive blue bonnets and mud caps, which have even documented were even issued to the regiments with replacement clothing. But to put it in short, the Scot mercenary in Gustavus Adolfus army would basically look like regular Swedish soldiers mixed with the look of the English Civil War Scottish Covenant. Something like that. So no tartan clad Highlanders with swords or something like that, but even though there are miniatures for it, most infamous is being the Mars, Mars set of Scottish mercenaries, which is just, well, pure fantasy. In terms of equipment, like any infantry in the time, the Scottish mercenaries were armed with pikes and muskets. Basically, probably you know what a pike is. It's this long, long spear-like weapon, with, which was really effective in close combat, especially in close formations. And muskets was a firearm that played significant role in the evolving tactics of the time and will play even more role in the conflicts to come. And soldiers of the Scottish regiments were trained to use both pike and musket. There are even some mites about the Scots being equipped with bows. There are instances where we know from some anecdotal memoirs that there were instances where Scots brought their hunting bows to the Europe, but there were personal possession for hunting, not weapon of war. So the image of Ragtag Scottish company clad in Tartan. And army bow, bows is just romantic fantasy at all. Of course, this can be mostly attributed to the famous Stettin engraving, but this is just probably visuals of the Scots Highlanders upon arrival to the continent before being issued a proper uniform and weapons, as Stettin at the time was important hub at the Baltic Sea. And also, we don't know if the real A witness echo. So. I hope this quick video gives you a brief view to the use of the Scots in the Gustavus Adolfus army. You know which models now you need to use and how to paint them. So if this war, war history for war gamers episode you find interesting, feel free to subscribe, like and comment. And comment if you like it, if you have well, some other tools, uh, tools on the on the subject and if you want to see some 
another project in the future, drop me in the comments what would you like. Bye. And don't forget to subscribe to see me in the next one.